Welcome back to the All Seasons channel. Today we're working on this fifth wheel. The customer has a slide room that will not move. Um, it has the Swintec uh, slide system with the uh, dual motors and uh, apparently Swintec um, helped him diagnose it um, and they determined that he's got a bad motor so they sent him a motor and he hired me to change it so that is what we're going to do today go get started and you guys come along for the ride now that motor lives right here on both top corners on a Swintec um, slide assembly Swintec told the customer that because uh, this room is all the way out and uh, covered with snow. It's a chilly day here in southern West Virginia. The uh, Swintec told the customer that uh, pull this trim piece off and change that motor from from out here. Um, I don't think I've ever changed one from the outside, but since the room is all the way in, covered with snow and ice. Uh, yeah, I'm going to try that theory because uh, just because it's going to be the easiest thing to do. Swintec says it'll work, so we're going to see. Alright, as soon as I got three or four screws out of that and pried on a little bit, I remembered. Swintec, they, they lied to that guy. Um, this, uh, this channel, that's a piece of C channel. That goes on both sides of the wall, inside and outside. Um, so you can't take this piece of trim off here and get to that motor. So we gotta go inside and take the fascia board off the off the room, just like I've always had to do. So yeah, uh, you know. You know, I mean hey, yeah, I'm getting older and mine's not quite as sharp as it used to be. And Sometimes I forget, uh, you know, it happens to everybody. But uh, yeah, we we can't take the we can't take the easy route. We can't take that piece of trim off on the outside. So we got to go in and start pulling the fascia off of the slide room. So, uh, again, we can take you along for all the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's an awful cold day today to be uh, working on this trim. Uh, pull all this trim off this room so we can get to the plywood fascia and take it off. Oh uh, well, hopefully it's like real wood so it maybe won't be too awful brittle, but uh, we'll see. I believe this is a three piece. Or at least a two-piece trim. Maybe not. Maybe I'll get a flashlight so I can see what I'm doing. And when I mean it's cold today, I mean it's cold. Uh, according to my vehicle, it was 11 degrees when I left the house a little over an hour ago, and. Uh, there's, I mean, they're not staying in this camper, so there's no been no heat in this thing, so it's cold. Oh, okay. Uh, still not real sure here. How this is going to come off. Believe. I believe it's just bratted on the front here, I think. I'm going to jump up on the bed and start up our. You know what? I may move you guys across the room. Oh. 
Oh, 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 oh. oh very interesting. This is very interesting. Never seen a fascia done like this. I don't know if the light helps or hurts, but um, took this little piece of trim off, and this fascia board is actually screwed on. So the fascia board might actually be the whole the whole face for the uh, for the room. So that's interesting. Take this small piece of trim off across the top to get to the screws on that part of the fascia. Very interesting. Glad I didn't pry any harder on that. See the screws? What's behind that one little piece of trim? So, this actually may not be too awful bad. Alright, we got the fascia off. Uh, you gotta kind of pull this trim back a little bit, and there's our motor. Already got it unplugged, and uh, should just be able to uh, reach in there with the screwdriver and pry that thing up a little bit. The motor's got wet, blue, blue. Looks like it's got some rust on it, but uh, yeah, just take and pry that thing up a little bit. Uh, it might have a little bit of pressure on it. So it may take a little bit of effort to pry it up. But there we go. There we go. There's our old motor. That's something different. Usually it's just got a little shaft coming out of it. Or something. Come off it wasn't supposed to. So they've made a change. See if I can I can't. Alright. I gotta free up my other hand. I'll get the uh, I'll get the new motor out and look at it and see if there's something different. Nope, nothing's changed. This is the new motor. That's all that should have come off. So whatever's still attached to that old motor, I gotta figure out that and get that off. I hope something didn't come apart that really, really, really wasn't supposed to come apart. I don't know. I can't hold this camera and, and do this, so I'll let you know what I find when I get it out of there. All right, I got the old motor out. I've just got to make sure that this piece went back down where it belongs, because I can't really see where it belongs. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I should have asked the customer if I could turn the heat on in this, motor, on this, in this fifth wheel, because I've been standing on this bed with my, with my shoes off for uh, about 30, 40 minutes. I bet it's still in the teens inside this camper. My feet are froze. Anyhow, we're gonna try and get this thing finished up. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna measure from here to the hole. That's the hole right there on the outside. There's a screw that goes in from the outside that holds that motor in. Let me show you. Well, I'd show you on the old motor. That screw from the outside goes in one of these four slots in this motor and uh, these go down in that bracket you saw me pry pry this one out of that's what keeps everything from this motor from twisting and that screw from the outside goes in here to keep the motor from raising up which would disengage it 
so it's not really nothing really mounts it in there solid uh, these four extended bolts right here just go down in four holes in a an aluminum bracket and that screw right here just keeps the motor down so I just have to figure out whether this piece whether that's as far down as it's supposed to go because I can't get to go any further so let me do a little measuring here and uh, we'll see all right I got that piece up out of there that's pretty simple it's just got a hex you know, female on that end, and got the uh, got the uh, D-shaped on this end. Um, so I don't know why it doesn't want to go back down there, or, but we're gonna figure it out. It's gonna show you something here. Um, oh, this is the motor, and uh, that's the drive. So I've never had this. Uh, I've never had this slip up before. Uh, that always stays where it belongs. But probably the reason that it did come up when I pulled up the motor. Can you see the rust on this motor? Uh, I don't know if I showed you that when I took it out. But that's that's what happened to this motor. So this piece must have been stuck a little bit. Because um, it just slides on like that. Because it's got a little... It's D-shaped to fit the D-shaped. I don't know if you can see that. The D-shaped... Uh, shaft on that motor maybe maybe like this there you go okay so we got to figure out why this doesn't want to go back down where it belongs because it has to go down flush with the bracket up there so got to figure that out all right i got the motor i got that drive that little drive piece put down in there it was just uh misaligned i had to kind of pry it and uh and it went right in there. Um, now, I uh, need to turn this motor just a few degrees to get those little pins to to drop down in their holes. Now, in order to do that, um, you know what? I did move this room a little bit. I may just try and move this room a little bit. Let me see here. Nah, I'm gonna uh, take a drill battery and the red and the black wires on these Swintec motors are your power. The rest of those are just probably timing or whatever. Um, so I'm gonna, I wish I could set this camera up so you guys could see, but it just, there's nowhere to set it. And I don't have Cameron the cameraman with me today. Um, yeah, there's just nowhere to do it. But anyhow, I'm going to use a drill battery and I got to move this motor just a little bit to get it dropped down in there. I really wish I could show you, but I just don't have, uh, I'd need a minimum of three hands. Probably four hands would be even better, but I don't, so I'm just going to have to do it. All right. Took a little finagling. I had to go back and forth, back and forth a few times before the pins finally lined up with their holes, but we got it. Um, I'm going to go outside and put the uh, the screw that retains the motor back in. Then we'll plug it in and uh, it should move. Uh, I'm not going to be able to... Well, I don't think I'm going to be able to run the room in unless some of that ice and snow is melted outside. But, uh, yeah, we should be able to sit and move anyway and we'll be able to time it because we can time it out. And I think I've been over that, but I'll show you the timing part of it as well. Okay, I'm going to put that uh, retaining screw back so this motor doesn't move up and lose everything that we've... I mean, I've been fighting this for a while. I've already been fighting this for an hour and a half. Trying to get that little drive piece back down in there where it belongs, get the motor in. Um, been helpful, uh, been really helpful if the customer to hung around to help me. It's uh, an extra pair of hands sometimes is uh, handy, and I'm not against using the customer because, uh, I mean, when you need help, you just need help, you know. So, yeah, we carry on. All right, got the motor plugged in. Uh, the room does move, both sides. 
Um, I can't run it in very far because of the ice in that, um, what they call it, S track on the outside, the aluminum track. Um, so, anywho, yep, we, uh, it moved. We got no more blinking lights down there on the, on the controllers. So, now I'm going to put this fascia back on and, uh, so we can time it by running the room out, but he's gonna have to let uh, he's gonna have to let this thing thaw off before he can run the room in. So, uh, yep. So we're gonna get started uh, putting the fascia back. Got to get all those brad nails pulled out first and get the fascia back. Okay, here we go. And I know I've been over this before. Probably can't see it. But there's brad sticking out of the bottom of this piece of trim. Well. Here's the, you know, here's the, 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 the pretty sides, what shows. Well, they put those brads in and then they put some, some putty over them. Don't try and take those brads back out the same way they, they went in. Do yourself a favor. Just pull those brads right out the bottom. Grab them with a pair of pliers. Just prime them right out. That way, when you put your new brads in, Instead of having eight holes to repair, you've only got four because you didn't disturb you didn't disturb these four old holes. I always do this with all your trim when you take, have to take a piece of trim off and put it back. Just uh, pull those brads out. Pull those brads out the bottom or, you know, or the back side save yourself a whole lot of grief see i'll show you see there's that brad and a piece of trim okay there's where they they put it in from this side and then they just put a little the correct size the correct size the correct color putty over that all right now if you tried to beat that thing back through and pull it out that hole you'd have a, a big old hole here you might have some marks where you're you pry it on it. We'll just do it from the back side. Just this easy. Look here. We got no, we got no hole. They didn't actually do a very good job filling their hole, but we did not disturb this side of this trim. We just pulled the brad right out the back.
Well, there you have it. There's replacing your Swintec motor on your Swintec slide mechanism. Um, only thing left to do now is just time it. And uh, like I say, we're not going to be able to run it in because it's still got ice and snow on top. So, but we can run it out and time it. All you do is um, hold it in the out position. You just push the button and, you know, it gets all the way out. And you just hold the button for like three seconds or something. If it's out very far, which I don't think this one is, I bet it ain't out a half inch. If your room's out of, out of time very far, what it'll do is it'll go out and then you're holding that button and it'll kind of, the side that's behind, it'll kind of go a little bit at a time. And uh, sometimes you gotta do that two or three times. Ideally, you would run the room all the way in, hold the button, you know, if it's fairly close, uh, but you gotta get it fairly close first. Run it out all the way and hold the button and it's usually in time by then. Um, if it's, you know, if it's pretty far out of time, uh, like I say, hopefully you're, you're most of the way in or most of the way out and um, just uh, go, go whichever direction you're closest to, hold the button. You know, you may, because it'll only do that for, you know, a few seconds. What you may have to do is run the room the opposite way, just a smidge, you know, just enough to get it to move. Swintec's kind of funny with their controllers and all that and then go back you know let's say we're going out okay because that's what we're gonna do all right let's say you was three or four inches out of time all right what you do is go out all the way hold that button for a few seconds it'll stop all right and then you have to come back in just a just a smidge just push the button to retract just long enough for it to move just a little bit and go back out again hold the button you may have to do that three or four times, but eventually that room will go all the way out and at that point it should be in time. So, I don't know. Swintec, it's a funny system. Um, I really don't know how that motor got wet, but it got pretty wet. Um, the, the customer will have to look at that one day. He's a, he's a building contractor. So, uh, uh, when that room melts off, uh, the snow and ice melts off, he'll have to look and see if maybe he can figure out where that water came from. There's nothing I can do today with all that ice and snow up there. So, uh, like I say, I'm on site, so it's not in a shop. It's not melted out. And uh, that's it. I'm going to let you uh, watch this room go out a little bit, and we'll see how close it is to time. But for the most part, we are done here today. Um, if you find any value in my videos at all, please subscribe and leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Okay, I mean it's it's got to be. I mean it's in time. So um, as soon as this thing melts off, the uh, customer can uh, you know double check everything. Um, sometimes when you're working in the field like this, you know you you have no control over the weather or uh, or anything like that. So we just we can't run that room in with that ice and snow, especially the ice in that track. Uh, once those little gears get to that ice, I'm sure we would have a malfunction. We don't want to have that. So he'll just have to finish testing it when it melts off. So, hey, thanks for watching. I'm going to go down the road and fix another one. Mm -hmm.